I grew up a supporter of the State of Israel. I, I was brought up as a Zionist. I went to Israel again and again and again on holiday. I had family there. I had friends there. But as I traveled around, because it's a small area, I would see not just Israelis in Israel living in huge comfort, subsidized by the Americans. I would see settlers in the illegal settlements living in huge comfort. And minutes away, I would go to a Palestinian township or village and see sewage flowing through the streets. And if you have any sense of justice at all, and as a Jewish child, I was brought up with a sense of justice. The disparity is unacceptable. And it's got worse. It's got worse and worse and worse the whole time. And the Israelis live in comfort. I've gone through Tel Aviv and see them sitting at their pavement cafes, complacently enjoying themselves, while hardly any distance away, the Ga people in the Gaza Strip are living in total misery. But don't let's forget the people on the West Bank. They're living in misery as well. Most of my parents' families, because my parents came here as refugees, most of my parents' families were murdered in the Holocaust. When the Germans came to the town from which my mother came in Poland, Stashov, they lined up all the Jews to march to the railway station to be put in cattle wagons. But for those who were not well enough to march, they killed them on the spot. And they killed my grandmother, who was ill in bed, by shooting her in her bed. My grandmother did not die to provide cover for Israelis murdering Palestinian grandmothers. I led a delegation of 60 parliamentarians from 13 European parliaments to Gaza not long ago. It was a year after the attack by the Israelis, which failed, as all Israeli attacks now do, though with huge loss of life, called Co Operation Cast Lead. A year afterwards, the smoke from the white phosphorus bombardment by Israel was still fuming away. People say rightly that the Syrians use chemical weapons. Nobody condemns the Israelis for using chemical weapons. Well, I do. So everybody, but particularly the young people and the children, are undernourished, which uh, affects them so much that it will go on to future generations. They have hardly any fresh water just for a few hours every five days. So they're diseased in that way. They have no fuel of their own, which means, apart from anything else, that a great deal of the transport now is by horse or donkey. There's hardly any electric electrical power. No building materials are brought in so that the schools that the Israelis destroyed, in some cases with children in them, cannot be rebuilt. Medical facilities are at their minimum. If any other country on earth was doing what the Israelis have been doing to 1.7 million Palestinians in Gaza, there will be United Nations resolutions, there will be calls for intervention, there will be sanctions, but the Israelis literally get away with murder. The Israelis have a very high first world standard of living. That standard of living depends partly on huge financial subsidies by the United States under the spineless Barack Obama and every politician pretty well in the United States yields to the Jewish pressure groups. And that's why they didn't do anything about it, even if they wanted to do something about it. 
the European Union is inactive, the British government is inactive, the Prime Minister, David Cameron, described the Gaza Strip as a prison camp. He said that when he was visiting a Muslim country, Turkey, Turkey yeah. and wanted to ingratiate himself with his hosts. Hardly anything is done, which is why lots of people, including me, take part in boycotts. But the boycotts, while important, are insufficiently effective. What we need and what I press for and will go on pressing for is governments, the United Nations, the European Union, the United States, our own country, to impose economic sanctions so that the Israelis can feel what international opinion meal means. There's no point in condemning them. There's certainly no point in appealing to their better nature because they don't have a better nation. You've got to make them suffer because that's the only way they will feel anything. And economic sanctions would erode this huge first world standard of living which they enjoy on borrowed money. Israelis are balmy, complacent and self-defeating to imagine that they can go on forever as they're going now.